as well as Tai Chow, if I got that correctly, with Ingenious. And so they're going to be bringing this, bringing us up to speed on some new products, as well as going over some of the other products. So without further ado, let me give control of this. Okay, Tai, you should have control. All right, thanks for joining, everyone. Great, thank you, uh, Jeff, for that introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. And again, welcome to the Ingenious Microcom pre-sales webinar training. Uh, again, my name is Tai Chow, and I'll be uh, your presenter for today's training. Thank you all for taking the time to join us for this event. All right. A little background about Ingenious for those of you who are not familiar with us. Um, just to give you a little bit of a uh, background as far as where we started, uh, Ingenious actually began offering solutions in, in, in the telecom arena with a little 900 megahertz cordless phone solution. That was really our first high power long range device and we honed our skills in providing this high power solution and translated that success over to our datacom solutions. And this has now really become our, our value proposition is, is providing high power long range product, products. Um, one key takeaway I'd like you to remember uh, about Ingenious is that uh, we do own our own R&D and manufacturing. So for certain opportunities, uh, we definitely can explore uh, additional options with with customizing products and um, things like um, customizing firmware for Petco and like Off Broadway, just to name a few of our customers that we've um, sort of created uh, custom firmware solutions for our telecom products and 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 as well as datacom in uh, some opportunities. Um, so uh, with that, let's get started with the Prezo. Wi-Fi client access has really been booming, and we've continued to see an upward trend in the market. Some of the key contributors to this uh, large increase uh, would be related to the increase in mobility devices. Uh, many are not Ethernet capable, such as uh, smartphones, Kindles, and tablets, uh, and, and some of those are not even 3G or 4G capable type devices. So they do rely on their connectivity by the ability to connect to a, a Wi-Fi network for client access um, and in public hotspots and other areas. Uh, another key uh, market indicator is the fact that laptops have now overtaken desktop sales uh, uh, within these last few years as well. And so just becomes increasingly important for public venues to offer wireless access, client access, to continue to attract customers to their locations. And, and that's been a factor for many traveling users uh, considering to either visit that coffee shop or stay at a particular hotel simply because they have uh, either free or some type of pay wireless access depending on, on that particular location's business model. Um, so I know that's been a factor in terms of uh, my decisions on where to go to get my coffee or, or, or where to stay at a hotel in many cases. And so as you can see here, uh, this is your typical um, coffee shop type scenario example. We have an indoor access point, uh, outdoor access point sort of referenced there on the side. Um, we, we provide high power long range products which can apply in many types of scenarios, uh, typically more in the outdoor point-to-point -point, uh, and uh, uh, connectivity type type solutions, which I'll go over later on in this presentation. Not so much. Well, it can be affected also with indoor, with uh, uh, you know both our access points and maybe like our high-powered USB adapters getting um, really tremendous range with our products. Um, but but that's kind of sort of the, the, the value proposition again for our solutions is, is uh, providing um, 
that type of uh, long range connectivity. Now jumping into our product categories, we're going to begin by talking about some of our indoor wireless access points and sort of the vertical markets that we serve sort of um, reference here on the left hand side of the slides. Uh, as you can see, sort of the, the key thing in terms of those vertical markets is anywhere that really needs uh, either client access for guests or employees um, or providing hotspot access in the case of like an airport, restaurant, or coffee shop. What we have is quite a lot of uh, smoke detector type solutions um, and client bridge type solutions to serve these particular uh, locations. And uh, on the top left hand side is our EAP 600. Uh, that's our basically currently our top of the line uh, dual band wireless end access points. It's an N300 solution. So basically a 2x2 two two MIMO stream on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. They do uh, operate concurrently. Just to give you an idea of the type of high power that is provided on all of these solutions, actually, the EAP600, the EAP350, and the EAP300, on the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, we offer 29 dBm, which is basically translated to 800 milliwatts of output power on the unit. Just to give you sort of a reference guide in terms of how we compare to other solutions out there in the market, um, if you sort of take a consumer router as an example of, of uh, wireless power, usually that would fall somewhere around the uh, 15 to 18 dBm range, which usually is about 50 to 80 milliwatts output power. Uh, typically they're, they're 100 milliwatts or less, and so um, in terms of range, every 6 dB doubles your range and every 3 dB uh, doubles your output power. So uh, that, that's sort of a, a, a gauge, if you will, of, of how we sort of compare in terms of range um, in comparison to other solutions out there. The EAP350 uh, is the next step over, which is our 2i2. Um, MIMO solution, uh, both the 350 and the EAP600 have gigabit ports uh, so that you can get the full speed of N without having any of it bottlenecked. And then the EAP300 to the right is, is a fast Ethernet solution, although it is also a, a N300 type product. As you can see, these smoke detector solutions are made for people who are really concerned about the aesthetics of the location and, and these products can, can blend in well with, with any environment. Uh, below that is the ECB350 and the ECB300. These are our client bridge solutions. Um, very similar in terms of output power and performance with the units above. So uh, the ECB350 is also an N300 gigabit type product. Uh, the ECB300 is 10100 solution. Uh, but the key differentiator between the 350 is uh, the, or I'm sorry, between the EAP and the ECB is, is really the um, form factor. Uh, the EAP products are really designed to be ceiling mount, so actually the antenna uh, radiation patterns are, are designed with that in mind, whereas the ECB350 uh, with the rubber ducky antennas can um, be wall mounted or um, ceiling mounted as well um, or even desk mounted uh, type solution. The antennas are removable, so uh, you can put on your higher gain antennas and uh, can look to Microcom for some of those additional solutions if you wanted to get a more directional type antenna for certain applications or just a um, different antenna with a different radiation pattern for uh, you know use in a, in a particular environment. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the ECBs also have different modes of configuration, so they're a little bit more flexible in terms of being adaptable and configurable to different wireless applications. They do include more bridge modes as well as um, uh, client bridge mode 
uh, and of course access point mode. Uh, moving on to some of our outdoor solutions, and as you can see, the vertical markets really are very similar, although there are a couple of uh, um, additional outdoor-specific applications in RV parks and marinas, but, you know, we, we offer both a point-to-point -point type solution as well as uh, outdoor solutions for client access um, any, anywhere that wants to offer Wi-Fi. And to go into some of the more client access omnidirectional solutions, we have here our ENH 210 EXT and the ENH 700 EXT, the 700 EXT being our dual band solution. Uh, again, very high output power, so these are uh, both on the 2.4 gigahertz side, uh, 29 dBm, 800 milliwatt output power. Uh, these particular units have our highest rated outdoor enclosures, the 210 EXT being IP67 rated and the 700 EXT being IP68 rated type solutions. Um, in terms of uh, how that f um, falls with other enclosures, IP68 is actually the highest rated enclosure, the first number being your uh, protection against dust and the second one being your protection against water. Uh, so. Uh, if you, if you needed to, these can be submerged actually in water for short periods of time, uh, although probably not a good idea to. <laughs> um, the, uh, both solutions have gigabit ports, and their uh, 700 EXT is dual band simultaneous, so uh, offers client support simultaneously on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radius. Uh, over here, moving along to our more directional outdoor solutions. These are really designed with a you know point-to-point -point connectivity in mind. Although in some applications you may use them for client access as well. For perhaps like a scenario where you had a particular narrow beam width that you wanted to maintain on on the wireless broadcast, uh, the ENS. 200 is um, our one by one solution, uh, whereas all the other solutions, the 500, the 202, and the 210 are, are two by two, uh, and 300, my most streams, are two by two streams. Um, the 500 is, is really unique because it's our only five gigahertz type product, and I, I really like this solution for, for the majority of your outdoor point to point applications because you don't have to worry about um, what you, you still do have to worry about, but there's um, less concern uh, with the uh, having the ability to separate this off of other wireless networks nearby. Just simply due to the fact that 2.4 gigahertz, you know, is, is, is heavily saturated in, in many environments. So 5 gigahertz gives you not only another option on a different band, but it also has quite a lot more channels uh, to um, be able to use and configure the products to. Um, Outside the DFS channel range, you're looking at probably around eight channels, and, and with the DFS channels available, um, you're, you're talking about about 20 channels total, uh, whereas you only have three non-overlapping channels in 2.4. Uh, in 5 gigahertz, they're already separated by 20 megahertz, so um, all the channels that are available for you to select are basically non-overlapping channels. So it's, it's a really great solution for a lot of uh, outdoor applications. Um, and and, and uh, we're seeing that uh, as well in indoor solutions as well. Um, the 202 and the 210 are both um, are 2.4 gigahertz solutions and uh, alpha powers on both of those are as well uh, at, at the 800 milliwatt level, whereas the ENH500 um, operates more on the um, um, 500 milliwatt level. Uh, it still gets you great range outdoors. Um, and in our cases, we've seen up to a mile on the ENH 500, um, offering about 72 megabits per second speeds. Um, the the 2.4 gigahertz solutions do go a, little, a, a lot further, about two miles to 2.5 miles. Uh, but but the throughput is 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 not as ideal. Uh, in any case, after a mile, I think uh, the 
the 2.4 gigahertz becomes a better solution just simply due to the performance you can get out of them as well as the range. And to sort of go into more detail about some of the, the um, use case scenarios that uh, sort of touched upon earlier, the ENH 700 EXT and the 210 EXT, since they are omnidirectional solutions, are really great for outdoor client access. The 700 EXT, um, since it has both dual band capability, can really be used either for client access on both radios or uh, in some cases using the first or the 5 gigahertz radio as your backhaul to some um, to either another uh, 700 EXT or, or perhaps another 5 gigahertz radio. Uh, really allows you to sort of extend the range um, in a non-repeater type fashion although um, I guess you could call it a repeater because it's you know doing a WDS configuration between the two but you're not having one radio basically performing the task of uh, doing connectivity back uh, to as a backhaul as well as providing client access at the same time. So that it improves the performance on your wireless network. Uh, the 210 EXT uh, can provide the same type of functionality, client access, and in some cases be bundled with like a pair of 500s or something like that if you need backhaul. Uh, but great outdoor access point solutions for providing uh, Wi-Fi to guests uh, and employees. Um, I think I forgot to mention this, but all of our APs that we've uh, gone over so far, uh, like the EAP models as well as the ECB models, uh, they all provide multiple SSIDs. So you can have an SSID for guest access, you can have an SSID for your employees and have them separated as long as you have the right infrastructure in place, like a uh, a managed switch that can do VLANs or and an inner VLAN router so that you can provide security between the two because otherwise you know what's the point of having two SSIDs if, if they're not going to be secure. Um, this is a use case scenario just showing you um, our outdoor client bridges in a point-to-point -point type solution. Uh, oftentimes it becomes cost prohibitive to run fiber into the ground and do some trenching. Um, costs, you know, become really great once you have to consider doing that. Whereas now with the uh, newer um, N type products and, as well as these high powered solutions, um, doing a point to point link to connect two buildings for um, a data connection has become a, a, a really, really um, ideal, well not really ideal, but a, a solution that you can consider at this time because of the speeds and, and the reliability and, and the newer security available um, versus like older security web and, and things like that doing MAC authentication which um, was very insecure at the time. Um, so now with like WPA2, uh, things like that, using RADIUS authentication, uh, uh, wireless has become much more of a considered solution for um, an option of, of connecting two buildings together. And uh, touched upon this earlier, but this is sort of a, a slide that shows how both the, the 5 gigahertz uh, radio can be used as a backhaul and the 2.4 gigahertz used for client access in an outdoor um, solution for, for like a a small, we'll say, campus-type network. Um, obviously, we have limitations with the WDS implementation. This is not the same as doing mesh-type uh, uh, installs. Um, so, for obviously larger site-wide deployments, this you know moves to you know a, a different set of hardware that you need to consider. But for you know a couple of radios um, doing WDS with client access, this is a a, a very good, effective solution. I'd say like RV parks um, would be a really good uh, example of where this would work well and, and perhaps a, a, a small multi-building type location that needs uh, surrounding client access. Uh, it's a great uh, slide to kind of highlight 
our indoor access points, the EAP600 and the EAP, uh, ECB350 being used here. Uh, both can be used to provide client access, and, and that's what's kind of shown here. Um, the ECB350, uh, especially for um, the uh, um, security, physical security type market, uh, we've seen a lot more implementations with that particular product because um, it's, it's just a little bit more flexible in terms of the mounting of the hardware and therefore we have the ability to plug that into like let's say a, um, a card reader or access system um, or perhaps even like some biometrics type uh, scanning device. Uh, to wirelessly connect back to, we'll say, the EAP 600 that's mounted on the ceiling. So uh, with those two products, you know, indoor access, client bridge type configuration, or even WDS bridge configurations in an indoor environment um, is, is really an ideal type solution to consider. Um, and building off of the physical security type um, uh, vertical market that, that we have here. Um, we have the client bridge solutions here in a point-to-point -point type configurations. We have surveillance cameras. This has been a really big um, um, solution being used for this particular request. We get quite a lot of requests about, you know, outdoor cameras, connecting them back, and, and again, trenching oftentimes is is very difficult, especially for that one camera that you want to mount outside in that parking lot or two cameras mounted outside in the parking lot, you know, thousands of dollars of trenching versus, you know, a couple of bridge products that w would cost, you know, quite a lot more. Um, um, there are a lot more price aggressive type solutions. Uh, is really a good consideration now for, for these particular type of installs. And so uh, shown or depicted here, we have just basically a, uh, three or two cameras um, shown in, in two point-to-point -point configurations. The other bridge over there could be connected back to the building where the DVR is located to um, record all that video or, or, or have access to the GUI or the streams for any administrators that are monitoring that network. So uh, this has been a, uh, also a really big um, uh, request for, for our client bridges and, and those types of products. Uh, just to touch on real quickly, we also have a easy controller software. This is, I would like to say, or call it a monitoring solution with lightly managed capabilities. Uh, these are our, this is available for all of our uh, products that we've gone over so far and um, can be used to, to help you monitor the traffic to see what kind of users are connected, the speeds and things like that. Um, uh, on the managed side of things, you can uh, do uh, mass configurations on multiple access points. Do they do have to be the same model if you do want to perform these types of tasks? But you could, I guess, do them individually if you have a mix of different um, models, like a bunch of EAB 350s and ECB 350s. But as long as they're the same model number, and and we see this more used in indoor deployments versus outdoor deployments, uh, you can do like uh, mass configurations, such as changing the SSID on a whole bunch of units or perhaps changing the output power on, on a whole bunch of units at the same time, uh, changing the secured, uh, the encryption keys and things like that. So um, this is a free download off our website, so if you wanted to check it out, um, you could go ahead and just grab it and, and play around with it, although uh, some of the features do require a live product to really you know get a sense and feel for how it's going to operate. But you can look at the tabs and run through it um, um, with, with the download and the install. And to just touch on a few um, success stories, these are actual installs live that uh, have implemented Ingenious Solutions. The first off is, is the Marina uh, type solution. This actually utilized the ENH210EXT. We didn't really have the 700EXT uh, at this time. And so a pair of 500s were used to create backhaul access from the main office location down to the dock area, the 210EXT was then hardwired into uh, the dock uh, and centered 
sort of underneath all the metal area, uh, underneath the hang, um, you know, the, uh, the the dock roof, uh, and uh, providing client access to all the boats that are um, basically uh, uh, located there. And so this was uh, implemented to provide client access to guests, and and one of our solutions that um, was very successful in, in terms of having the right set of hardware and performance necessary to meet these customers' needs. Uh, again, this is a surveillance camera physical security implementation with our products using uh, ENH 500s. Um, it seems to be real popular in terms of, of having, you know, that particular 5 gigahertz link to, you know, provide connectivity to the cameras and the data streams. Um, I think this particular solution, each camera required only about one to two megabits per second of throughput, and so we were able to, you know, implement uh, this ENH 500 solution uh, for this for this locale. It was about I think it was about 20 cameras total, um, a few cameras each connected on on the point to point link, probably around three or four max, and. Uh, um, used in this particular outdoor deployment for uh, this this association to sort of monitor and, and the the traffic and the and the people around the area. Um, speaking to our indoor solutions, uh, this is a hotel in in New York that used our access point for client access in this location. Um, this one was pretty unique because an access point was actually installed in every single room and turned down to you know a lower power setting. Uh, this, this particular solution was really more for client access rather than having just you know blasted out coverage needs. So uh, access point per room, um, provide get, providing guest access and uh, um, combined with a couple of outdoor products used for uh, some of the, the outdoor locations where they had like um, a bar and sort of like a restaurant area were used to, um, you know, sort of fit this hotel up and provide client access to um, all of its guests there. Um, and then speaking to like sort of the RV park type scenario, uh, campground type scenario, um, we have our outdoor solutions. Um, in this particular case, it was the EAP, or I'm sorry, EOA 7530s um, providing uh, access to some of the campers. Um, these were placed throughout the location. Currently, it would really be more of the ENH 700 EXT type product to provide um, this type of solution to uh, this particular application. And so the 5 gigahertz being used as a backhaul, 2.4 gigahertz used as client access to sort of give a good spread of wireless service out throughout this location for all the campers that wanted to connect up and utilize uh, the, the internet service. Uh, lastly, this is very unique to, um, I guess, uh, all the other solutions. Uh, still really kind of talking about point-to-point -point deployment, but we have a really uh, good fit here for a digital signage. We have actually uh, a few customers that really have standardized on our products for this particular type of application. And so, um, you know, having a point-to-point -point link to provide connectivity from this, you know, digital sign back to the main uh, office where the um, computer is located that can push out, you know, the different graphics and 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 light the signs in different manners uh, has also been a, a very big. Uh, request and, and uh, success for ingenious product solutions. So this this definitely takes advantage of our outdoor point-to-point -point solutions because they're nice. We don't have to worry about having a antenna to mount. It's all integrated in a single slick box. Uh, so installing and, and having this uh, mounted and everything like that makes makes the process a lot simpler for for end users and and uh, resellers alike. And so with that, uh, um, it's pretty much the presentation. Any questions out there? There must be a few. 
Okay, I got a couple of them that came in here. One of them is on the, uh, I think it's the 700U, I'm not sure on the part number on it, but the one that has the dual um, access points in 5 gigahertz and 2.4, how is, how does, when you talk about linking those together versus using a straight WDS, on the 5 gig side, do you set one up as an AP and the other as a station as clients to it, or is, are the 5 gigahertz WDS, so the 2.4 doesn't have to be? I guess you could do either. You use WDS and WDS plus AP. You want to kind of run through that? Yeah, there's two different configurations that, I guess, WDS modes that the access point can be placed in. Uh, it, and if you're linking the access points, like, um, we'll, we'll call it repeating, but more like in sort of like a hopping type configuration, uh, then WDS for the 5 gigahertz is definitely recommended and then providing client access on 2.4. The WDS modes that are available are WDS bridge, but we do also have WDS AP to WDS station. Uh, sort of the differences with that is WDS bridge requires two MAC addresses. Uh, basically, you put in the MAC address of all the other um, 5 gigahertz backhaul links that the WDS will be configured and connected to versus WDS AP station. It's more like a um, it's very similar to an infrastructure type mode configuration where you're basically utilizing SSIDs rather than using MAC addresses. And you don't need the MAC addresses of any of the devices. We've seen slightly better performance doing it in a WDS AP to station type configuration. And you also are limited more uh, to the number of connections um, in the WDS bridge field uh, if you wanted to uh, configure it that way. So. There are advantages to each. I think you'd still probably want to limit it to to no more than like, you know, two hops and like on one and more of a star configuration. Um, I, I would still probably try to limit it to three to four WDS connections uh, at most, just, just for performance purposes. But it really depends on the amount of throughput that you guys uh, are that uh, is needed across each of those links. So. Hopefully that answers your question, our question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, another one is on the products, are they all, um, on as far as their power via PoE, are they all 802.3AF or? Oh, that's a very good question. I, I should have mentioned that during the training. Uh, the indoor products are all 802.3AF supported. We don't provide a PoE injector with any of those solutions, we do provide a power adapter uh, to use for you know powering the device locally with an AC connection. Um, however, we do have injectors that can be purchased separately if if needed. Um, on the outdoor solutions, they are a little bit more unique in the terms of we do have some proprietary PoE type products, and and it's primarily most of the. Um, the point-to-point -point type solutions that that I went over that have the proprietary PoE, the ENH 700 EXT as well as the ENH um, 210 and 210 EXT all are standard 802.3F slash AT. They can be used with a you know a, a PoE switch, uh, but on the outdoor solutions we actually do bundle in our PoE injectors with the products due to the fact that some are proprietary, um, even with the non, or even with the standard PoE type solutions, we bundle a PoE injector. So on all of those products, they're basically ready to go out of the box. Okay, now did any of those ones uh, have uh, a PoE out option with it also for the outdoor directional ones, like the ones where you showed with the security cameras? Uh, no, the ones that have two ports, and having a secondary port to connect to a camera, unfortunately, we don't have PoE pass-through to support powering the camera directly. Um, but but that has definitely been a hot topic and something we've been pushing. So I'm I'm hoping that we will have a solution soon. Okay. Uh, then I got another question here. Uh, can Ingenious provide the solution as APCPE dual radio repeater 2.4 to 2.4? Um, as nowadays the ARC solutions providing in the market? You can you reference ARC wireless? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they, they have some different types of configurations. Um, on on dual band, you basically, and I'll let Ty finish this, but I, the they can both operate in client mode, or one can operate in client mode, one can operate in WDS. They're they're, uh, but they you can't have both in a point to point link. I believe is what like five gigahertz point to point on one end and two point four on the other end. Correct. Like one of them has to be. They can either be talking to clients in AP mode, um, or one can be used as like a client bridge, WDS bridge, WDS AP station type deal, um, and the other one set to standard AP mode. So they can't both be used to be bridge connections at the same time. Um, if you're going to do any repeating, obviously we would recommend doing it with a dual radio device because then you're not sacrificing the performance on one radio to do not only uh, connection back to um, you know the the backhaul as well as providing client access that you know he heavily reduces throughput and performance on that unit. And so you know you you we would definitely recommend having a dedicated backhaul on five if you want to do any type of repeating with client access on 2.4. Okay. So if that answered that question there. Um, the other thing was on the easy controller, do you once do you just use the software for the setup on it or is it for monitoring it or does it need to keep running on a PC or is it cloud based to to access and control a network remotely? It can be used for all of the above, although in in some cases, I, I guess, if you're just using, um, if you only have one device or a couple of devices, it may be easier just to, you know, connect to the GUI interface and then plug them into the network. Um, um, especially when you start, well, even when you start getting to multiple units, I think it, the configuration really becomes more like a, when you uh, want to make effective, like, changes to the units at the same time, but they're already up and running. Uh, they can be used for monitoring uh, as well, uh, and they can be used to give you quite a lot of usage and statistics um, about what's going on on each of the APs. Um, from from the user interface, you can also get redirected to each of the GUIs uh, by right-clicking on on the AP and uh, choosing to you know configure that unit directly. Um, so so it does give you quite a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, all of the uh, above requested features. Not, not required though, like it doesn't have to stay running and active. Right, it doesn't okay. have to stay running and active. What about for uh, roaming as far as AP handoffs? Um, in terms of AP handoffs, what we support really is nomadic roaming. Roaming is always going to be handled by the client anyways. Of course having a WLAN controller would help with handing off the client to one device to another. If anything, if you wanted to look at something that's going to be more effective in pushing, I guess, a client off of the AP to force them to, you know, reconnect or talk to a different AP, I would look at the EAP 600 because there are things in there which can effectively help. We have like an RSSI threshold uh, type setting which basically forces somebody off the AP if you know their RSSI reaches a certain level and then you can also limit the clients on that particular device to a certain number so you know once it reaches that cap then it's obviously forced to try to find a different AP to con connect to so um, although it's obviously if you're going to have seamless roaming requirements then you're going to want to have a WLAN controller in that particular environment and fortunately we don't have that in our product line at this time. Okay, I think that's all the questions so far there. Okay. We also, uh, we'll have to, we'll, we'll do these on a, on, a, on a regular basis as we've done in the past. Uh, we. And next one, uh, we'll, uh, we've got a pretty feature-packed roadmap of products, so both indoor and outdoor. So uh, within the next uh, uh, middle of the year, we'll have you know quite a few new products that uh, kind of you know 802.11ac, 
three by three MIMO, uh, cloud-based, uh, you know, true cloud-based systems. Uh, so we're uh, we're working pretty aggressively on the R and D side. So uh, next time around, we'll we'll have some uh, even some more things to uh, to review. Okay. Do you want to go over the new stuff or? Yeah, we got a few minutes. You know, you could uh, kind of bounce through a couple of the the uh, the other slides. We have sort of another product family, I guess you'd call it, uh, on the uh, on the consumer side. So, if you want to hit a couple of, the, we'll just touch touch on them briefly. Okay. Do I still have the ball, or do... yeah, you, go ahead and click it. Mouse, there it goes. There, there we go. Ah, we should have been on this slide. Sorry, this has our contact details. And on that, if you guys have got any questions, you can contact your Microcom sales rep or the sales at microcomtech.com, and we can get you and get in contact with them if it's questions that we can't help you with. Great. So. Oh. <sighs> Moving along to sort of uh, touch on our consumer line of hardware. We, we have a, you know, a, a pretty um, robust product set in terms of having a solution that will fit any requirement in terms of speed. Uh, we have a one-by-one -one solution starting off with the ESR-150H. Uh, then it goes to two-by-two, two, which is the ESR-300H. Uh, the ESR 600 and the 750H are, are dual band uh, wireless consumer router solutions. Um, the 600 being um, two, or I'm sorry, 300 uh, and 300 on both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, and the 750 being 300 on the 2.4 and then and then 450 on the 5 gig side. So a two by two and then a three by three solution. Uh, the EINR IR900 is our top of the line uh, wireless router um, and that basically is um, our three, I'm sorry, four, three by three solution on both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. Um, on the 600 and up, they all offer gigabit ports. Um, on all our solutions here, we also have a USB port for sharing media across the, the network, um, whether it be a storage, a USB external hard drive, or a, a little flash disk. Uh, these are all um, part of our units. Um, antennas are all removable on our solution, so if you want to go with higher gain antennas, um, on the 750, the 600, and the 300, these are options for you. As you can see on the EIR 900, there are no antennas uh, to remove on that particular unit. So that one is, is more unique in terms of, of upgradability, but um, on all our other solutions, you do have that particular option uh, in case you do want to get more range. Um, in terms of output power, um, the 300 and the 150 are our higher output power devices. They go up to 200 milliwatts. Um, so you do get a, a, a lot more range and spread throughout the house. And when bundled with our USB adapters, which are also high-powered units, uh, that's where you can really take advantage fully of having um, the high-power solution in, in your home because then you have you know, the ability for both the devices to talk to each other properly. Uh, whereas if you just use one, you still do get a little bit better performance um, because of the receive sensitivity on our devices. But uh, having both ends with, with the uh, output power levels to provide or to get the two-way communication is, is really the ideal way to fully maximize the performance on the ingenious product solutions. Um, looks like it's waiting. Yeah, the EIR 900 also has uh, 
the stream engine built in. So for if you're doing any kind of gaming or video streaming, it has a hardware ex 